The world of personal finance is known for its complicated jargon. One of the concepts that often confuses people is APR, or annual percentage rate. It's often mentioned in car commercials, when trying to get a bank loan, or when applying for a credit card. But what exactly does it mean? Today, we're gonna hit the street to find out what people know about APRs and what they need to learn to boost their financial well-being. Do you feel stressed when you see a bunch of financial terms that you don't know? Yes, I do, especially with doing taxes. Um, not really, I just Google them. <laughs> Google them, that? Yeah. So when you read a financial contract, like for a credit card or a loan, what goes through your head or what are you looking for? How much do I have to pay back? Because not everything is free. What type of commitment am I making right now yeah. that um, I may not realize the effects of it until later on? So I, I look for benefits, like, okay, so for me spending this money, what do I get back? Uh, the APR, right away. Right away? Course. Okay, I great. I see where it's at, in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s. <laughs> what does APR stand for? Percentage return. APR stands for annual percentage rate. Yep, you got it. And what is the annual percentage rate? What does that mean? The annual percentage rate is a, uh, it's a good question, and I'm not an expert on that. <laughs> the people I spoke with were a bit confused about APRs, and that's okay because it's a complicated topic. But once you know a few of the basics, it's a lot easier to wrap your head around APRs and how to deal with them so your financial stress doesn't feel overwhelming. Here's financial expert Gene Chatsky to break it down for us. APR is, when we're talking about your credit card, the same as your interest rate. The thing to watch out for when it comes to the APR on your credit card is if you do miss payments consistently, the APR can go up. To improve your chances of getting a better APR, you can spend a few months working to raise your credit score. One great way to do this is to prioritize paying your bills on time or even a little bit before they're due. To make things more manageable, consider making small payments to your bill each week. This will make your balance at the end of the month feel less overwhelming and reduce any anxiety you have about receiving your bill. Once you build this habit, you'll notice the positive results immediately both for your wallet and for your mental well-being.